Hello Booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and in this video I'd like to tell you what I read for my first annual Little House Readathon, which was originally going to be called the Laura Ingalls Wilder Readathon, but you can call it whichever you want and I won't get mad at you, but I did officially change the name to Little House Readathon because it just seems to roll off the tongue better. It's just easier to say. So what this was, was a four-day readathon. It started on the day of Laura's birth to the day of her death. February 7th to February 10th, and the only challenge was to read at least one book that was written by or about or inspired by Laura Ingalls Wilder. So I hope that you read at least one book, and I would love to hear about it. If you did and you haven't shared that with me on one of my social media places, then I hope that you will. I did do some Instagram posts during the readathon. I did set up threads on my Goodreads group, Lizzie Face Comfy Corner. I have not yet gone back there and written up everything that I have read. I will do that after I get this video done. So maybe it'll be there by the time you see this video. And I did not do anything on Twitter, but all of my social media links are down in the description box below. So if you have not ever followed me or friended me or anything on any of those places, I hope you will. So anyway, let's get to the books and let me know in the, also in the comments below if you haven't yet what you read. So here we go. All right. So I finished a total of six books for the readathon, but one of them I didn't read and finish until after the four days was over. So during the actual readathon, I finished five. I started one more that I still haven't finished and I didn't read or even start several of the others or a couple of the others that I had planned to. So let's just go through them. I didn't know until I started looking up Laura Ingalls Wilder books for this readathon that there was a book of fairy poems. I believe, as I recall from the introduction here by Stephen W. Hines, she wrote these poems when she went to San Francisco on her once in a lifetime trip to visit Rose when Rose was grown and working there. And if you want to know more about that trip, her letters that she wrote back to Almanzo are in a book called West from Home. And these poems, I believe, were written there, and I believe they were published in a periodical. And so Stephen Hines put them together in this cute little book. It is illustrated by Richard Hull. And the book is delightful. The poems are really cute. Now, the I have some mixed feelings about the illustrations. They're fine, but they're just... They're unique. <laughs> and not my absolute favorite. You know, I don't love them, but I like them. They're, I don't know, they're fairies. So anyway, it's a cute little book. And if you are interested in reading her poems, you know, it'll take you just a few minutes to read them. And it is really a, di a delightful little book. I also finished two books that were biographies written for children, both by William Anderson. This one, Pioneer Girl, the story of Laura Ingalls Wilder, is more of a storybook, picture book type for a younger reader or maybe a younger child that's, you know, maybe your parents are going to read it to you. I don't know, something like that. And this is uh, more to that age group. And there are some beautiful illustrations by Dan Andresen, I believe is how you would say that. And then this one is for a little bit older reader. This is more of a chapter book, also with illustrations, but these illustrations are by Renee, I don't know if it's Graf or Grafe. It's called Prairie Girl, The Life of Laura Ingalls Wilder. And both pretty much cover the same thing. It's just that one's written for a slightly younger or slash older audience, depending on what you're talking about. So then I also read another nonfiction book, The Little House Guidebook. This is just what it says it is. It's a guide to all of the home sites where Laura lived and there are places there that you can visit. And this is very comprehensive, very good information. My edition is from 1996, I believe. It's been updated two more times since then. And that's good because this has very specific information about times when things are open, places to stay in the area, other things to do in the area and places to eat and stuff like that. And of course that type of thing can change over time. So try to, you know, if you haven't ever picked this up, try to get the newest edition if you're actually planning a trip. And I believe that there are websites for all of the main sites. And I did a video about this and I want to say that I did leave links in the description of that video to all the websites 
of the homestead sites. So if you are planning a trip, you should be able to link to where you're going and get all the up-to-date information. I know at least one of the sites still had last season's things on it because a lot of these places, most of them are only open during the summer months or at least during the warmer times of the year. And so it's we're in winter right now, so a lot of these places are closed. And as soon as they get their schedules up for the winter or for the warmer weather, then they'll be posting all of that. So it'll be coming, you know, hopefully pretty soon. So there's a video about that. I also posted on my Instagram. I took pictures of scrapbook pages of my own visits to some of the sites, and those are on my Instagram. So if you haven't found those, then again, there's a link to my Instagram down in the description box below. So check that out. All right. So the other, let's first do the other two books that I finished, and then I'll show you the stuff that I didn't finish or didn't start. So you guys know I read Caroline, or I listened to this on Scribd. This is by Sarah Miller. And one thing I forgot to mention, I did do a, a video review of this, just a short one, and um, almost, I'm trying to think how many of you mentioned this, at least three people, I think, mentioned that you didn't like the intimacy dis that was described between Charles and Caroline. And I didn't really either. And it's funny because I had filmed that video probably four times. And I mentioned that in the other three times. And then the one I ended up posting, I forgot to mention that in. So um, I did not care for that at all. It was not horrible. And it wasn't extremely graphic. But like a couple of you said, it wasn't necessary. I think there would have been a medium in there somewhere because I guess maybe she just wants to make sure you know this is an adult book, but you there's some details that you just don't need to know. You you can allude to that without getting into the descriptive things. And it wasn't over the top, but it wasn't necessary. I completely agree with that. Now, I did hear from one person after I chatted about that with several of you that she really liked that aspect of it that it really gave all the um the details of things so to each his own you know it's not wrong either way i mean there's certainly that all happened within the confines of their marriage and you know that's that's wonderful so Anyway, that was one thing, though, that I neglected to mention that several of you commented about that that was the thing about the book. Really, the only issue that you didn't like about the book was that it did describe some of the intimacy between Caroline and Charles. So, other than that, if you didn't see that video, then it's on my channel as well. If you haven't read the book, it's basically an adult version of the book Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder with some historical details there that she left out of her children's book. So, and some adult details <laughs> that she did not put in her children's book because as a child, she would not have known those details. So, you know, it is what it is. The other book, because I finished Caroline early in, uh, on Monday morning, the last day of the readathon, I still had the whole day and I thought, should I go back to my other audiobooks or should I you know, I didn't really have time to go to the library to get anything on CD. I looked on a couple of the library sites and I couldn't see any audiobooks that were related that I that were short enough that I could just get done in one day. And I remembered that I had this. This is an audiobook of Farmer Boy. Now, I had to pull an old relic out from under my desk in order to listen to this because this is on audio cassette. It's four cassettes. It says it's six hours. It didn't feel like it was that long. But yes, I put this in my kitchen and I listened to this during the rest of the day on Monday, February 10th. And I got it done before uh, before the evening was over. And this is really a good story. Now, I said in my Goodreads review that this one, Farmer Boy, was always my least favorite of the Little House books. That's not to say I don't like it. It's just that when I was a kid, I was really wanting to read about Laura. And I had to stop everything and read about Almanzo 
and I wanted to get back to Laura. So that's really the only thing. This is really a sweet book. It is Almanzo's story of when he was a child. There's another book that someone else has written in later years that talks about his family's move to Spring Valley, Minnesota. I have not read that. I don't own it, but I do want to get to that at some point pretty soon. But this is just Almanzo's younger years. There are some really neat little vignettes stories about his life on the farm in Malone, New York, and it is really a good book. So I don't want anybody who reads my Goodreads review to think I don't like it. It's just that I, it's not about Laura. So, you know, that was, that was the only reason for that. But I'm glad that I listened to this again. I think I had read it once when I was a kid, and then in my early adulthood, I listened to it on audio when I discovered, when I first discovered audiobooks, and I discovered that our library had, I think, the first five books on audio. I listened to those again. The later Little House books, I have not read since childhood, so at some point, I need to reread those. And I did start the first Rose book, Little House on Rocky Ridge, and I think I only got a chapter or two read. I'm, I think I'm like in the middle of the second chapter, <laughs> so I didn't get very far with that. Um, and that's okay, too. Oh, no, I did read... I either read one chapter or two chapters. Let's see. I just read one chapter. Anyway, it's good. I've read this before, but I wanted to kind of start over with the Laura books. This starts out talking about the family's move from DeSmet, where they're leaving Ma and Pa Ingalls, and they are moving to Mansfield. So that's the story here. And then I said that I was going to at least start Pioneer Girl, the annotated autobiography and I did not I did not even start it so Emily Sears did you get very far in it I know Emily was going to read it as well she was going to read this anyway I think for February and I was like oh wait 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 you know we're going to do a readathon so maybe you can hold it for that and so she did and it's kind of a chunker so it's going to take some time and I don't know I have so many other things now that I didn't get it started with it I may put it on the back burner maybe I'll save it for next year I don't know I don't know. I have to decide. So then a couple of other things I had thought I might get to and I didn't. Laura's album. That's kind of a scrapbook. I did not get to that. I did look through Laura Ingalls Wilder Country kind of in preparation for my video about Laura Ingalls Wilder home sites. And I looked through that. I read this other one completely cover to cover. Little House Guidebook, and I did not get the other one read. And then uh, when I did my video about introducing your children to Laura Ingalls Wilder, I was talking a little bit about the My First Little House books. I showed a board book, and there's a series of four of those. And then on the uh, in that series, there are some others listed that are for a, they're more like picture storybook picture books. And they're more for like an easy reader, not for an easy reader. They are easy readers, but a little higher level than a board book. And so I noticed then that there was something called My Little House ABC and My Little House 123, and I didn't know if those were board books or picture books. And I got one from the library, finally it came in, and it's a picture book. So it is not not a board book. And it has illustrations that are inspired by Garth Williams. And it's basically got an A, B, C for everything. Their Q is for quilt. R is for ribbons. On the back it says A is for apron, B is for butter, and C is for churn. So I have not read this. I may read through this. I might read through this with Emily before I send that back to the library. And that is it. That is everything I read and didn't read that I thought I might for the readathon. Oh, there was a quilt book. And I've already taken it out of here. There was one I showed. I did also flip through that. It's called what? I don't even know what it's called. It's a it's a it has quilt patterns in it. I think fourteen quilt patterns that are inspired by Laura Ingalls Wilder, and or by the Little House books. And there's some really really cute ones. I will um, leave the information about that in the description below, so that if you want to look that up, you can. Anyway, that's about it for this video. That's everything that I read, and I will post about these on my Goodreads group, Lizzie Face Comfy Corner. So if you are not a member of that group, I hope you'll join it. I hope you'll follow me on Instagram and check out the posts that I did for the Little House Readathon. And I hope that you will comment below and let me know what you read, if you haven't already, and if any of these books sound good to you. And let me know if you want to do this again next year. I am planning to do this every year, whether you want to or not. <laughs> but uh, but no, if you, you know, 
if it's something you think that you would like to do, then uh, let me know in the comments. It's always good to have validation and or the opposite. You know, I don't want to waste my time if no one cares. But uh, anyway, that's all I have for this video. I did get a new phone, so I am trying that out and videoing on this new phone, which thankfully has a lot more memory than my old phone. So that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.